we do know is when you get to the check stand to pay for those razor blades and you scan that barcode number and it goes, oh, Gillette razor blades, we're monitoring those, and you get a second close-up of your face taken with a hidden camera. At the end of the day, security compares all the images from camera A to all the images of camera B to make sure that every person picking up razor blades was later shown and photographed paying for those razor blades. If for some reason you picked up the razor blades and you were not photographed at the check stand paying for them, you are now a potential shoplifter. Your picture gets printed out and blown up and distributed to security, and the next time you go in that store, believe me, that entire surveillance arsenal that they have in there tracks your every move. Now, some people would say, well, you know, that's a good thing. We don't want shoplifting. Maybe that'll bring down prices. Well, let me say a couple things about that. These tags right now cost, it's estimated, between 20 and 60 cents a piece. And uh, I bet you that we're the ones paying for it as consumers. The other thing I have serious concerns about is that we are a nation with a system of jurisprudence that is based on assuming people are innocent until proven guilty. Now, the current system of shoplifting prevention, as you go out the door, you set off uh, a buzzer, which says maybe we have a reason to suspect you. You set off a buzzer, prove, prove you didn't do it, and that's okay. Show me your receipt, and you're fine. This system assumes every single person picking up a package of Gillette razor blades is a criminal and takes your picture, assuming you are a criminal, until you prove yourself innocent. So it's really the opposite system, guilty until proven innocent. Now, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I'm, I'm a lifetime Gillette razor user. I never used another brand until just recently. And... My sense about these razor blades is they're unbelievably expensive. A four-pack of razor blades can be seven to ten dollars, depending on where you buy it. Now, my sense is, if I'm in a part with ten dollars of my hard-earned money, you should have a mariachi band and hand me a margarita. <laughs> you should not be taking my picture without my knowledge or permission, tracking me around the store, and assuming I'm a shoplifter. So we have actually called for a worldwide boycott of Gillette, and uh, everyone in this room, I would encourage you to join us in that and to spread the information about this to your friends and people that you know who may be buying Gillette products. And I figure it's worth maybe trying a different brand and learning to get used to a different kind of razor uh, if we can put a stop to this. Now, what's happening is Gillette and these other trials are being watched like a hawk by the other 102 or 100 sponsors of this organization to see how will consumers react once they learn about this. Uh, their original, original hope was that consumers wouldn't learn about it. We've changed that. Uh, I've been on radio all over the world uh, in, 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 gee, where have I been? Tasmania and Sweden and France. I've done interviews all over the world. And we've gotten this story out, particularly in England where this trial was uh, openly underway in a, store, in a grocery chain called Tesco. So people are outraged when they learn about it. They go ballistic. And that's the good news. Um, by the way, in those internal documents we got from the Auto ID Center, let me share a bit of good news because I know this can be a, 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 a bad news uh, seminar we're doing here. The good news, 78% of people in their surveys do not like this technology on privacy grounds. 78% of people oppose it on privacy grounds. They believe, as they should, that this technology will, will be abused, it will get out of control, and it, people won't be able to stop it, and that we cannot trust these companies to do the right thing with this technology. And already, I mean, this is the, you know, the, the tip of the iceberg in terms of abuse here with this trial. All right. Uh, Target has been, let's see if we can put this up. There we go. Target has been uh, embedding these in DVDs, by the way, right now in real time in the United States and stores across the U.S. Um, I, I had said that there are three, three ways in which RFID technology is different from the barcode. Uh, the first one, of course, the individual unique number, creating a registration system for items with people. The second way being that it can be read through your clothing or your suitcase or your wallet from a distance. The third way we haven't talked about yet, and that is that this technology, if it becomes pervasive, will cause all of us to be exposed to a constant chronic level of electromagnetic energy in the environment. And we honestly do not know the, the, the health effects of being continually bombarded with this type of energy. So what this means is if you actually have, and, and by the way, the proponents of this technology envision, and I believe this is a quote, a pervasive global network of reader devices everywhere, all the way down to consumers' homes. So they envision that everywhere you go, you would be bombarded with a reader device trying to scan you for chips, where, scanning your electronic cloud that would be emanating from you at all times. By the way, home applications, uh, let, me, let me just mention a couple of those that were proposed. Procter & Gamble, one of the founding sponsors of this technology, has a video they call the Home of the Future. And in the Home of the Future, they actually have a refrigerator wired up to the Internet where all of the contents of the refrigerator are constantly beamed out over the Internet. 
They would be beamed out to the store so that they would know how, how, you're, how quickly you're consuming the items in there so they could maybe have them ready on the shelf for you to reorder. And uh, one of the, this is sort of a telling application, the contents of your refrigerator would actually be beamed to your t cable company in order to determine what advertisements would run on your TV. So as you're getting down to your last Budweiser, maybe an ad for Coors would run and somebody would make some money off of knowing that about you. So uh, let's see. Another application for this, and this is this little uh, Hitachi Mew chip, the tiny little 0.4 millimeter chip, is to actually put these in cash, in cash money. Now, remember I said earlier that the store wants to know who you are, and they can't know that if you're not scanning a credit card, if you're not paying with a loyalty card. And one of the ways that it would be possible to know who you were down the road would be to make cash registered to individuals. If cash carries its own unique identifying number, that number can be registered to whoever last received that cash. So as you get the money out of the ATM, the ATM knows your name because you had to put the ATM card in to get it. The bank teller knows your name because you had to present some form of ID or a card to get your money out of the bank. That money could easily be passed through a reader device which would record the numbers on the cash and associate them with your name. That information could then be provided, oh, I don't know, say to Homeland Security or say to uh, John Poindexter, who is the individual with the Defense Department who wanted to create something called Total Information Awareness, later renamed Terrorism Information Awareness, later uh, quest of questionable whether it will even be funded or not, but that program should send chills down your spine. That is the program that says the federal government, in the name of protecting us, needs to have access to every single piece of data about every single person in this country in every single data database, meaning everyone from your supermarket to your phone card records to your Kinko's photocopies to your banking information, your you name it, having access to all of that information. All right, so you can imagine that the, the next information that they might want to have would be the money that you took out of the bank and maybe where you spent it and who you gave it to and at what point that changed hands. This uh, is a slightly difficult image to see, but at the bottom, I believe that's a gift certificate, but it's the same idea. Uh, there was an announcement just recently that high denomination yen banknotes will be equipped with this, and that by 2005, euro banknotes may be equipped with this technology. And here in the United States, I'm often asked, will American currency be tagged? To my knowledge, it has not yet been tagged. To my knowledge, there are no plans underway right now to tag American currency. However, this is a story from a couple years back uh, where an, an official with the Federal Reserve Bank wrote a paper in which he suggested putting tracking devices in cash, this is the craziest idea, something called the carry tax, which would actually identify the bill and cause it to become worth less money incrementally the longer you held onto it to discourage you from hoarding, which we used to call saving, but to discourage you from hoarding money and to encourage you to spend that money and keep it in circulation. So the idea there, if you put your money in your mattress, 10 years down the road it might be worth zero, and all of that money would have gone to tax, that it would actually be a tax paid to the government. So there is interest. Uh, this was before, I believe, RFID was widely known. Uh, I, I believe the federal official talking about this was talking about magnetic stripes. RFID would be a perfect application for that. Now, what if I told you, um, let me back up. I had lunch about a month ago with a reporter who said, well, you know, Catherine, the read range on these things is only 20 feet. I mean, what's the big deal? If I wanted to know everything you did, I'd have to walk around behind you from 20 feet away with the reader aimed at you. And why do I need the reader? I can just watch you if I have to be 20 feet away. Now, I said, what if I told you that with only four reader devices, I could pretty much retrace your steps today? She said, well, how's that possible? Well, let me say it to each of you. What if I told you that with four reader devices, I could pretty much determine that you'd been here? Well, the first one would be a reader device at the on-ramp of the freeway that you probably got on to come here. Michelin, the tire manufacturer, is already right now embedding these devices between the rubber layers of its tires. Now, it is doing it to comply with some federal mandate that says cars need, or tires need to be easily identified because of the big Firestone mess where the Firestone tires were defective. Um, other tire manufacturers have managed to comply with that mandate without putting RFID devices in the tires. So we have some concerns about whether how legitimate of a reason that is. But the fact remains that Michelin is putting them in there. 